Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. Please quickly make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified for all of these videos and the question for today. Richard, how can I make 500 horsepower with a small block Chevy? Can I do it naturally aspirated? Can I do it with like the little 305? Can I do it with nitrous or maybe a blower or maybe a turbo or a stroker motor? The answer to all of those questions is yes. Here's how. Okay, let's get things started on our Fast Five, five different small block Chevy combinations to make 500 horsepower. We're gonna start off with a DZ302, and the first thing you'll notice, hey, wait, Richard, this is not making 500 horsepower. But don't worry, it will. I just wanna start out with a baseline, because we did run a stock DZ302, you know, four inch bore, three inch stroke, fuely heads, Duntoff cam, dual plane intake manifold, and with headers and such, this combination produced 357 horsepower and 333 foot-pounds of torque. What we did then to get it to produce 500 horsepower, which is a fairly big step up, we upgraded all the things that help it make power. Lucky for us, the we, this combination, this DZ302, already had a good short block. It already had forged pistons in it. It already had, you know, 11 to 1 compression. So what we did was change the power producers. And by that, I mean basically the heads, cam, and intake manifold that help determine how much power. Because one of the things really holding this thing back were the fuely heads as good as they were back in the day. They're just not <laughs> up to par for, you know, compared to more modern stuff. So what we did was we put a set of airflow research heads on it. And here's what happened. We didn't, we did more than airflow research heads, but that was uh, one of the key elements. So we'll take a look at our description here. So what we did was step up basically everything. We put a much bigger camshaft, in this case, a solid roller cam shaft, which was a 640, 621 lift, a 256, 260 degree duration, and 107 degree lobe separation angle, very tight, worked very well. We also had a Holly Strip Dominator single plane intake manifold, the Airflow Research 195 heads, I believe, and a 950 Holly, bigger carburetor, you know, more flow. This thing also had a Amoroso oil pan on it with a kick out and a windage tray and things because the oiling system is critical for what we're trying to do. We threw a lot of things at this. We ran, uh, we tried different timing levels. We put a one inch tapered combo spacer. We even tried flipping it over. We obviously changed the lash to tighten it up and loosen it up. We did a lot of different things to try to get this thing to make power and it eventually did, it did very well. We produced 518 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at right at 400 foot-pounds of torque. You can see it's pretty flat for a long period. We would eventually, if we ran this thing lower, this would not be a combination that you'd want to run it lug around at 2,000 RPM because it has a lot of camshaft in it. But if you're wanting to run to 7,000, 7,500, and even uh, beyond that, this is a good 500 horsepower combination. So let's check out our next one. So our Fast 5 motor number two for small block Chevy is actually still a naturally aspirated motor, but a stroker version. This was a 372 inch stroker motor. So I'll go ahead and take a look at the specs on this. And so I got a little interesting comparison here. And this is the West Tech is the Dart SHP short block. So it was a 4125 bore. So the big bore block because it was a Dart block and the 348 stroke. So the standard 350 stroke, but a big bore version it had a flat top piston, forged internals. It had a good Mylodon oil pan. It had a crane hydraulic roller. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. Hydraulic roller lifters, obviously inch and three quarter headers, 1.5 ratio roller rockers. And this one was run with a Holly Strip Dominator intake and a 950 Holly. Uh, timing set at 35 degrees as we're showing here. And this was a good combination because not only did it make good power, you can see it has a really nice curve, carries out for a long ways, over 500 horsepower from 5700 on up. Made 520 horsepower, yep. And peak torque checked in at 477 foot-pounds. So good torque curve, power extending out. You could continue to rev this thing even though you're gonna start getting on the downside of the curve a little bit, but this is easily a 7,000 RPM 372 stroker motor. The big bore obviously helps flow. The interesting thing is this was run with a set of 227. Let me make sure about that. Um, run with a set of... 
Yes, set of Dart uh, CNC ported 227 heads, and they worked very well. And in fact, they were we weren't using all of what those heads had to offer on this combination. We could have used more camshaft and more compression. This one was about 10 to 1. And an interesting test though is we also ran, in addition to the CNC ported 227s, we also ran some 180 cc as cast heads, and you can see they also did fairly well. They made over 500 horsepower. Checked in at 510 horsepower. You can see that they fell off at the on the big end compared to the 227 heads. But the 180 heads actually made a little bit more power down low. In fact, below 5500, they did better. And then, and then again, oddly enough, at the very, very bottom, the 227 heads did a little better. But this is why we do this crazy kind of testing to find out all of these weird things that happen. But if you're going to try to make lots of power, you can use the bigger head, obviously, and it's working very well. But know that even the little ass cast head, easily over 500 horsepower. So far we've had a 302 and a 372, but what small block discussion would be complete without a 305, the best small block ever made? I know, I know we'll get comments on that, so let me know what you guys think about 305s, but they obviously can be made to make good power just like every other displacement. So we ran a Tuneport 305, which was an LB9 from an IROC, you know, back in the day, uh, ran a stock one, but we ended up also running nitrous on it in, in modified form and it made pretty decent power, made over 500 horsepower. So I want to show you that combination. We'll start off with our tune port motor. This was a bone stock 305 tune port motor, made 267 horsepower and 333 foot pounds of torque. The only thing we did was put, it had no accessories on it. And we also put long tube headers on it. This is what happened after we modified it further. So I'll go ahead and tell you what's going on here. We did put a camshaft in it. So we had the stock short block. We had a Comp XFI 268 cam, which was a 570, 565 lift, a 218, 224, and 113 degree lobe separation angle cam. We had a set of Trick Flow Super 23 heads, which are probably one of the better choices for the small bore 305. We had a Holly Stealth Ram intake manifold, kind of a tune port looking combination, and dual 52 millimeter throttle by or, or yeah it was two dual 58s actually and we ran it with a, a holly hp management system and run in that configuration we had up the power output up to 367 horsepower and 349 foot pounds and here's what happened after we modified it even further what we did was we had ended up putting a uh, efi version of a uh, Victor Jr. single plane intake manifold on it, although we ran it carbureted. We ran it with a Zex nitrous kit and adding nitrous to our 305 obviously worked pretty well. We ended up with the Victor Jr. intake and the 650 XP carburetor. But as you can see from the photo, it also had provisions, which is why we had to run a spacer on it to move the carburetor up so the linkage would work and not hit on the fuel rails. Uh, we ran a Zex kit with a 46 nitrous jet and a 40 fuel jet and run in this configuration. We were e e able to exceed 500 horsepower, 503 or four foot pounds, and then peak torque checked in at 487. The torque number would be even higher had we activated this earlier. We activated it around 5,000 RPM just to do a short sweep with the nitrous. But here you can see easy 305 heads cam intake, a little bit of nitrous, and you're on your way. The next Fast 5 combination was a 350 inch motor. In fact, started out as an L98. So the tune port. This one was a Corvette version and a later one, an aluminum headed tune port Corvette version. And we did upgrade the heads cam and intake manifold on this. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our description here. We had a um, set of pro comp heads on the Speedmaster uh, CNC ported 195s. We had a pretty good size camshaft in it, Extreme Energy 282, which is a 230, 236 degree duration. I'll go ahead and put the rest of the specs up here. We had inch and three quarter dyno headers. We had a Victor Junior EFI intake manifold on it and an AccuFab throttle body. And then we would be blowing through this with a Vortex supercharger. We also had a set of roller rockers on here and run in this manner. Our combination Whoa. produced 387.5 horsepower and 392 foot pounds of torque. 
Here's what happened after we added our Vortex Supercharger. You can see, as always, they make good power. This thing started out making about two pounds of boost down here at 3,000 RPM, ended up with a peak of 8.1. We did this as a blow-through carbureted combination, and it was continuing to climb. If we would still rev it, we only ran, ran at the 6,200 RPM, where it made 561 horsepower, and peak torque was right at 500 foot-pounds of torque. So you could see almost any kind of small block combination. You could even do this with a stock motor and a cam upgrade. In fact, an inexpensive way would be to go to the wrecking yard, get an L31 Vortec motor, stick a cam in it, add boost to it, and you can easily make 500 horsepower. No combination of 500 horsepower small blocks would be complete, obviously without some sort of turbo version. And that's exactly what we did. And what we did was apply boost using an old HP Performance Turbo Kit for an L98 Corvette. And we ran what we thought was a stock L98 motor. Turns out it had some other kind of camshaft in it that we did not identify, but it was making more power than a stock one did. All of the rest of the things were stock on it. Stock L98 heads, a stock tune port setup. We did put larger injectors in this. We were running it with a, a fast XFI management system. And we just applied about eight and a half pounds of boost to what we thought was a stock motor and it produced 479 horsepower and over 600 foot-pounds of torque. In fact, you could see that we were making peak power at about 4,600 and peak torque came at 37 or 3,800. And I think had we kept going and loaded it earlier than that, we would have saw <laughs> really impressive uh, torque numbers anyway, because that's what these tune port motors were really all about, was making lots and lots of torque so that you can roast the tires. And with 600 foot-pounds, not a problem at all. But I know what you're thinking, Richard, this doesn't make 500 horsepower. But it did after we put a small camshaft in it. So here is the small camshaft. This was actually an extreme energy. It's actually a nitrous cam because we also did a nitrous test on the naturally aspirated motor. It was an extreme energy uh, or, or a, an NX 256H and it was a 434, 464 lift, a 212, 222 degree duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle, proving once again that every cam is a turbo cam, including a nitrous cam. And equipped with the nitrous cam, still running about 8.5 to 8.6 PSI, this thing produced right at 500, 500.2 horsepower. Peak torque was the same because most of the gains from this camshaft came past 4,200 RPM, but again, uh, otherwise kind of stock or stock-ish tune port motor, a small camshaft, a little bit of boost, and you've got 500 horsepower. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure We're making 500 horsepower from a variety of different displacement small block Chevys? We had natural aspirated versions, stroker versions, and nitrous and turbo and blower and all of that stuff. So what did we learn? Well, we learned that the small block Chevy has a lot of coverage in the aftermarket. It makes it easy to make a lot of power. In fact, you can make 500 horsepower from any displacement going all the way down to the little 262, 265, 267, 307, 283, all of those things. The only thing that you have to be concerned with on some of the small bore motors like the 305 is the availability of cylinder head flow. But honestly, if you even port a set of stock heads, put a camshaft in it, put an intake manifold on it, and then add boost, 500 horsepower is not a problem. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.